My bending brake came with three of these clamping bars, and I've been tripping on them ever since. Today we're going to give them a proper home. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, you've seen quite a bit of my electromagnetic bending brake on the channel recently. Uh, most recently when I built the welding cart and folded the bottle bracket for that. Now the bending brake came with three different clamping bars, a wide one, a narrow one, and a slotted one for making pans and trays and boxes. And that's great, but it didn't really come with a way to store them. And we're gonna fix that today. I have been just moving the bars around the shop, trying to stay one step ahead of the cameras, and that's getting old, so let's build a permanent solution. I've got the bending brake turned around here so you can see the back of it, and I've got the uh, box and pan clamping bar on here, and I've got the narrow clamping bar just sitting back here on the tooling shelf, and there's another clamping bar that's just solid, and that's over sitting on a pallet on the other side of the shop behind me. And the goal is to find a place to put these just on the brake where they're gonna be easy to get to. And there is a space underneath this that would be ideal if we had a rack to hold them. If I could just slide them in and set them on a rack like this. Now there's a transformer under here that I could just set them on, but that's not very stable. Uh, what I really wanna do is put a rack here with a couple of shelves to hold the bars right here so I can just reach over, pull them out, and set them up on top and I can get to them and put them away quickly and easily and they stay nice and secure here on the back of the brake. Now it turns out there are some extra threaded holes in the back of the magnet right here. And these are intended to put support bars out the back to support uh, large sheets of metal and to have little collars on them so you can use the, set up an adjustable depth so the sheet will slide against it. I'm not using those, and the way I use this in the space I have in the shop, I don't really have room for them, so I left them off, but we can use these holes. These are M8 threaded holes, and they are 50 millimeters apart. So the idea is to make a little flange that attaches here and weld on some uh, rectangular tubing to actually make a shelf with a couple of supports. And this is the material that we're gonna use. This is 3 quarter inch, 1 16th inch wall tubing and I'm going to try to just notch and bend it and just weld this up with the MIG welder. If we end up completely blowing through it and making a huge mess, then I'll pull out the TIG and we'll get the job done one way or another. First thing that I wanna do is cut some notches out of these tubes so that I can bend them and create a 90 degree miter bend. Now I could just miter cut these and then weld them together, but if I cut out a notch, I should be able to leave the outside edge and bend that material and end up with a 90 degree corner without having a weld seam on that outside edge. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I went through and just used a carpenter square and marked these up and I initially marked them up using a Silver Streak pencil but this uh, cold drawn tubing didn't show it very well. So then I used a carbide scriber. That worked much, much better. I could see it but you really couldn't. And then ultimately I just came back with a Sharpie so you could see the line. So let me cut these out. I'm just using my four by six horizontal bandsaw flipped up into the vertical position. And this blade is really too coarse for this thin wall tubing. So I'll just take it nice and easy. take these over to the vise and bend them. I could probably bend it here, but I'll do it in the vise so I get a nice square controlled corner. So we've got the notch cut in the tubing and I made an effort to get it all the way back into the corner and leave just a little bit of a flat there so that we have some material to bend, just to make sure that the joint doesn't close before we reach 90 degrees. If it does, we can fix it, but that's the plan. So let me just put this in the vise and it shouldn't require anything special. It should just bend very easily right at that point. And it looks like we are, in fact, 
ever so slightly shy of 90 degrees. Let me do the other one. But you can see that is, does not quite close to 90 degrees, but we can fix that. Let's do the other one, see how close it is. And that one also does not quite close to 90 degrees. Throw a square on this so you can see it's not quite there. It needs to be opened up a little bit more. So what we'll do is we'll take it over the bandsaw and we'll just cut through this just like you would with a wood miter and that should clean it up and we should be able to close it to 90 degrees. closes and we can get that all the way to 90 degrees. In fact, we can get that just slightly past 90 degrees even. So that will be just fine. We'll clamp it up at 90 degrees when we weld it. I was going to try to TIG these up just because uh, I thought I would have a little bit better control uh, and I would be able to maybe even uh, wash this in flush but I chewed one side of this up and left a little bit bigger gap than I wanted. So MIG is going to save us. I've got uh, my welding fixture table here and I'm gonna go ahead and set these up to get them square. Just use a couple of pins. I'm gonna float them on these uh, magnetic spacers just so that when I flip it over, the weld bead that I left on it won't be running into the table. So I can use this to force it square, but then I will double check it, of course. And I'll just double check it with a carpenter square. And nope, not even close. However, because I don't have it seated against the back here. There we go, nice and square, and I will just weld across that corner then. Unsurprisingly, the last weld looks the best. I'll go ahead and uh, run a grinder over these and they'll become perfectly presentable. Now, when I originally cut these to bend and weld them, I cut them with the legs long because I didn't know exactly how this bend was gonna work. I didn't know how much material I was gonna need to leave for a bend allowance. So I went ahead and just took them, cut them long and I've gone back here and I've marked where it needs to be cut off here and over here. I've already got one clamped up in the saw and I will just cut these off to the proper length. And then I also planned it out so that the leftover piece of material would be useful for other parts of this same part. So let me go ahead and make these cuts. Now the bandsaw blade that I have in here is a little bit too coarse for this thin wall tubing. So once it gets through the top of the tube, I'll support it with my hand so it doesn't just dive in and tear all the teeth off the blade.
now that I've got the short end on here, I can look in there and I can see how well my welds penetrated, but why would I want to show that to you? These are the metal plates that I'm going to use to attach to the back of the bending brake. We have already got it cut to length and I'm not gonna bother milling them because honestly, these are just flanges that are gonna get welded up. I just need to locate the center and offset some holes in them. We'll start by finding the location of the vise. And then I've got a stop here in the vise, so I'll just put these in on parallels one by one. Bring it over, put the first one in, and then I will find the center using the DRO. I'll just touch off on one side, touch off on the other side, and use the half function. over to zero. Does that look like the center? That looks like the center. Okay, and I'm just going to go straight to the final drill size. And this is a 354 thou drill. And I have my diagram here and it tells me I want to be 394 thou from the top. I'll lock that. And then we need to be off of the side, 984. And we'll just punch some holes. Just going to flip it around so we don't have to locate anything else. Done. Why did I make three when I only need two? That's cute. It's like you've never been in a machine shop before and never made a mistake. Now the last thing I want to do while I'm over here at the mill is I want to put some tabs in the ends of these parts. And so what I want to do is mill away three sides of this and leave just a quarter inch tab that I can then bend up 90 degrees. And I'll have a little tab to keep the bars from slipping off the ends of these arms and that will make life a lot easier. And I won't have to do any welding or cutting of additional parts in order to make the tabs. And I will just use this same stop. Drop that in and let me get an end mill. job, I just want to cut through as quickly and efficiently as possible. So this is a half inch roughing end mill, which is all we need and we'll just plow through this. I'm 
for depth, I'm just going to make this nice and easy. We'll just touch the top. And then we'll just bring the knee up three quarters minus one sixteenth. Gonna go clean these up on the on the grinder and uh, come back and we'll try to bend one. Okay, got that cleaned up. Now all we should have to do is drop it between the vice jaws, give it a little pull. And now we have a little lip on the end. So this tube will support, it'll be the rack for storing the bars and uh, they can't slide off the end because there's a little tab there. Okay, that one's got a little bit of tear right at the end, but I'll just go ahead and dress that up. I don't think there's going to be any issue at all with any of that. Yep, they all are, look about the same. Okay, I think we just need to go weld it all together. So when this whole thing goes together, it's going to be this uh, cross tube, the down tube, and then two of these rack uh, shelf pieces. They're gonna go in like that. I've already got the first one set up and let's go ahead and make the weld. Okay, those are done. Next thing we have to do is just attach these flanges. Now if I did this properly, there should be a one inch gap behind here so I can just throw in a one, two, three block. Okay, well that is two parts welded. I'm gonna call that good. Let's go bolt it on and see how it works. These are cooled enough to touch now and the welds are okay. I've got a challenge here because this is 1 16th inch wall tubing and uh, 1 8 inch thick material. And this is the first time I've ever tried to weld material of two different thicknesses. So I ended up just kind of shooting, I mean, tried a few things, but ultimately ended up shooting the heat in between uh, the heat for the 1 16th and the 1 8th, and just being real careful. And I got it washed in there all right. And um, on one of these, I tried just washing in a bead along the edge of the 1 16th um, at the right heat level for that, and then came back, once that was built up, came back with a hotter bead and got it to burn into the 1 8th. And that works okay. Now these will just go on right here, and I discovered that I don't actually have the right length of screws because the screws that came with the extension arms were longer than I need. So I just threw some nuts on them, and I will get some proper screws maybe tomorrow. 
the holes here are just not tapped very deep, so I can't, I can't use a screw that's too long very easily. There we go, that's nice and solid. Throw the one over here on the other side. If you have one of these, by the way, I believe these are M8 screws. Okay, that's that. This is the thin bar, and I should be able to just slide it in, store it on the shelf. Let me grab the other thick one. And it should just go in here on the bottom shelf. Well, as you can see, that is just about perfect. These little lips on the end keep them from falling off, and I will be able to easily, from the other side, just reach over, pull out the bar I want to use, and take the bar I don't, reach over and just slide it in here in storage. And that is gonna make this bending brake a lot more convenient and more importantly, get these out from underfoot. So I quit tripping on them and I quit having to move them every time I work in the shop. I'm actually given my welding skills a little bit surprised how easy that was. Uh, welding the thick material to the thin, eh, not so much. If you've got great tips on how to do that better, go ahead and throw those down in the comments. I'd like to hear them. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. And as always, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching.